All right, so I'm a little filthy. I, whatever. We're starting this. I'm in the middle of another project, but we're going to talk about how to change the brakes in your Forerunner. This is going to be good for 96 to 2002 Forerunners. It's also going to be good for first gen Tacomas, which is like, I think, 95 to 2004. Anyway, started getting a squeaking noise on the front right side of my Forerunner as we went down the road. And I had a sneaking suspicion as to what that was. I thought it was either brake pads or a bearing. The way it behaved, it would behave when we were under braking. So I was assuming that it was probably brake pads. And as you can tell, this is the brake pad that came out of that side. And there's this little guy right here. Is that indicator? That is a wear indicator. And if you can see how shiny it is, that's because it's been rubbing up against the brake rotor. What that little indicator does is it tells you, hey, look at your brakes, it's probably time to change them. It's just an audible tone. When you hear squeaks or grinding anywhere in your vehicle, that's something you should investigate. So that was something we investigated while we were here doing an oil change. Now it's time to change the pads. Now, for a comparison to how wear this pad is to a new pad, well, fresh wear surface used. And that's it's roughly about 65,000 miles on that set of brake pads for this 4Runner. So we got our life's worth out of them and now it's time to change them. I look, the, the rotors are still good. I've already done one side and now I'm gonna go ahead and walk through how to do the other side. And before we do that, just note that we've got the vehicle up on four jack stands. It's off the ground 100% and we've already removed the tire. All you gotta do is just take the wheel off like you normally would, like you were changing a tire, get it up in the air. I'm gonna swing by on my way over to the other side and show you a trick that you need to do at the reservoir before you start doing this, okay? So one thing before you get in here that I want you to do, and that's get into your brake reservoir and grab a turkey baster and just grab a couple of poles out of there. Open the top, grab a couple of poles. Grab a pop up, pop up, pop up. I can't even talk. I don't know what that's about. It's kind of freaking me out. Anyway, just go ahead and pop the top on your brake reservoir, grab a turkey baster, take a good couple of poles out of it and put that oil in your oil pan that you're gonna drain. Whatever, just put it in a container. It's, it's gonna be garbage fluid, so just get rid of it, but get rid of it responsibly. Keep an eye on it though. You may need to go back up there after you do one side or the other. Just do one side first with like two poles with a turkey baster out of it, then come back before you do the next one. If you need to take another pole, take another pole. You'll see why in a minute, but essentially when we go to open up the calipers here, it's gonna backflow brake fluid and you either have one of two ways to deal with that. You can use a bleeder down there at the bottom or you can have it cycle back up here to the reservoir. But if it comes back up here to the reservoir and your reservoir is already full, it's gonna blow itself up out of the top. That's why we need to take a couple of scoops out with a turkey baster, okay? Okay, so we're in here and as you can see, I got the caliper set up. Now for this project, realistically, I'm thinking I only need a flathead and this here, three inch C-clamp, okay? Hopefully, if all goes right, these are the only things I have. I might need to, the use of a small hammer for a little bit of tapping purposes only, okay? Now, we've already gone over safety. The vehicle's up, it's on blocks, it's secure, it's blocked, the tire's off, it's not going anywhere, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in here and we're gonna start stripping the breakdown, okay? probably gonna have to narrate this because I can't talk to you and have you see all this going on so uh, Matt at the editing desk take it away okay like all good American television we're gonna be aping something that we saw the British do in this case Trailfitters toolbox as our inspiration for the narration those of you who are Land Rover owners and haven't watched that particular channel I can tell you he's got some great information on do-it-yourself Land Rover repair with very good videography of the processes and steps he's doing. Now what I've done so far is just used a screwdriver to pull out the keeper pin and I'm pulling out this butterfly plate right now. Next we'll stick the screwdriver in there a little bit early to try and go ahead and relieve some of the pressure between the pads and the rotors. You're likely not gonna be able to start prying on that pin right away, so get your blunt force impact applicator out and give it a couple taps so that you can get a better bite on it with the screwdriver head.
you might need to give it a little love tap to help it work its way out. That was a little trickier and it probably would have been easier had we used something like penetrating oil, but we're working on brakes and I don't want any kind of lubricant around my brakes because, well, that makes them not work so good. Now that you got that pin slid out, it should be relatively easy to get in there and pry on it. Just take the three inch C-clamp, put the flat end on the pad, the other end over on the side of the caliper and just start twisting on it slowly but surely. You might need to relocate a time or two to get to the other pistons. Just keep working it like this, and as soon as it's all the way open, well, it'll be time to pull that brake pad out. It is important to note the placement and orientation of the shims on the brake pad. Some pad kits may include new ones, some may not, so don't throw yours away until you know for certain. Without them, not only may your brakes not function correctly, they might also suffer from a rather annoying amount of noise. You'll repeat the step you just did on the other side to get the opposing brake pad out. In this case, the pad kind of rolled itself back because of loss of tension between the calipers and the rotor, so we're going to have to work a little bit harder to get this one out. Still, it's not anything our flathead can't take care of. turns out with the other side's pad out you can kind of wiggle the rotor a little bit and that'll give you a little extra room to go ahead and slide it on out again make sure you get both sets of shims out and observe the way they were oriented Once you've got everything out of there, go ahead and use the C-clamp to finish pushing the pistons back into the caliper. This will make it a lot easier to get those thicker new brake pads in there. Now you're going to want to get that pin positioned before you try to slide this pad in. We're going to try to catch it with the top pin and then we'll align it to slide the bottom pin in. I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to take a bit of wiggling until you finally get it, but when you do get it, everything should fall right into place. Now go ahead and get those pins lined up as close as you can with the inside face of the rotor without going past it, so they're as close as possible to catch the next pad. Now all it takes is gentle tapping here. Don't hammer on this thing really hard. You don't want to bend anything. You just want to give it some gentle tapping so that this pin can kind of find its way through the pad and the shims and into the caliper on the other side. Now I realize that I shouldn't be using a flathead screwdriver as a punch. Get the appropriate tool if you end up needing it. And as you see, I backed off of that there. Did some more alignment here and the pin Once you get the top set, then it's time to go ahead and finish pushing the bottom through. Now, again, I probably should have taken these pins out and maybe brushed them with a wire brush. That probably would have made them slide better. So if you find yourself having this kind of a problem, perhaps you may want to do the same. Now we're gonna put that keeper wire back in. All you gotta do is loop it back into the caliper like you see, and then push it through the holes in the ends of the pins. You might need to get something like a pair of pliers out to twist the pins around so you can get to those holes at a better angle. And once that's in there, we're gonna take the butterfly clip and put it back in. This kit actually came with a new one. Obviously, don't throw away the old one until you're certain that the kit you had had a new one. If it doesn't go on right away or you're having trouble with it and need a little extra leverage, just go ahead and grab your friendly screwdriver.
And there you go. You've just replaced the set of brake pads in the front of your Toyota 4Runner. Now go ahead and give everything a wiggle real quick just to make sure it all winds back up okay. Then you're going to go ahead and put that front wheel back on, take her off the jack stands, fill up your reservoir to the appropriate level, pump the brakes a few times, make sure that they work, and add fluid as needed, and just keep an eye on it for the first little bit and make sure everything you did works out okay. For a list of the parts and tools we use, check the links in the description below. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm Matt Kester. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Frugal Explorer Dad. Check out the channel on Instagram at Secondhand Overland or our Facebook group, Secondhand Overland, or our website, secondhandoverland.net. Till next time, be good.